And welcome back to a new episode of Coffee with Toffees, guys. My name is Toffees, bringing you all the news you need for your esports world. And I've got an interesting show for you tonight. A lot of folks are talking about the patch that came out yesterday. And yes, that is important, but there's some other stuff out there. And if you want, if you want to know about the patch, there are reviews coming out all over the place. Uh, I know that Blitz did one with, I think, Suns Fan uh, and a couple of other folks that is like three hours long, is about as intensive as you can get. In fact, there's a Reddit super thread that has about 20 different patch reviews on it. So if you're an extremist, go check that out. If you are not, tomorrow night I'm going to have Gorgon the Wonder Cow, uh, the king of analysis, as I like to call him. In fact, I even heard a rumor he might be getting a new job in analysis exclusively. The guy's so good at it. He's going to come onto the show and he's going to talk about the things that you need to know. So basically, if you're a casual, if you're like me and you're a pub star monster rocket and you want to get that MMR up, you come listen to the show. We're going to do about 20 to 30 minutes. We're going to talk about the important things that will be game-changing and maybe a few things that can help you boost that MMR in the first couple of weeks of this patch. I'm not against using an overpowered hero because you know what? You watched the show. You learned the secrets. The other guy did it. And if they wanted to be good, they could watch the show too. So they can just suck it. That said, it's time for the show here. This is a brand new episode. It's brought to you by Betway, Razor, and MM1.FM. That's a new app that you can use to download esports news, specifically specifically Dota 2, as well as podcasts. Uh, that said, the show today is all about TI, and I'm joined by my guests. I've got a couple of folks that you probably are familiar with if you watch the show regularly. The first up, we've got Alan Bester, known as Nahaz. He is an analyst for JD, does a lot of stats for them. He also worked at MLG Columbus. You probably saw his mug on the face, and I'm glad to see you wore a collared shirt instead of the old uh, MLG standby swag. <laughs> I want you to know that I actually have my Razor sweater hidden behind the curtains, just in case you swagged out on me tonight. So I'm glad we get to keep it classy. How are you doing tonight? Nice. I'm great, man. Glad to be here. Awesome. Second person up is a new guest on the show. This is Proxy PL. He is a senior writer over at JD. I was going to say his name, but I don't think that I can. How do you say your name, Proxy? Yeundrzej uh, Smaru. Yeundrzej Smaru. Yeundrzej. That's even harder than Johannes Safan. Uh, but I, I respect that, and I will call you Proxy. Uh, Proxy yeah. is actually a writer for the show, so if you guys watch the uh, Week in Review, if you like the tournament roundup that we do on Fridays to help uh, the working man keep up with what's going on in Dota, Proxy is a huge part of that. He's actually my lead writer on all of our Friday episodes, so I'm glad to have him here on camera so you can kind of get a look at uh, what our writing staff looks like. So welcome, Proxy. How are you doing this evening? Great. I'm very glad to be here. Awesome. And the last guest is someone you're probably familiar with, Skim, uh, a man who once upon a time worked over at Gozu, now is out freelancing, doing all kinds of YouTube videos, assessments, uh, a lot of his own thing, and I'm loving the content you've been creating. How are you doing tonight, Skim? Hey, man. I'm glad to be here. A bit tired, but, you know, talking about Dota keeps me awake, so... You know, and there's, there are a few things I like more than talking about Dota. In yeah, fact, that. sometimes I, I put together an impromptu show... Uh, on the spur of the moment, and then me and Hip and Nahaz end up talking for an hour and a half uh, about it. So uh, this is what this is what drives us. This is what we're glad to bring for you guys. We're gonna keep it fast and sweet tonight. So let's get right into the meat and potatoes right out of the gate. So we're talking about TI invites. Now we know the patch is out. We know from the patch notes that Valve has told us that we will be getting an announcement. We don't know what level of information will be given to us, right? But we do know that we're going to start to know some of the teams that will be participating in the international by the end of this week. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that gets me super hyped because that means we are one step closer to the event of events, the Super Bowl, the World Series. I mean, this is, this is big. This is the World Cup for me, man. So I'm super stoked. Now, we're going to talk about the invite format. It has been different or essentially different in format every single year since TI started. Uh, we're not going to go into the details of each format, but at the end of the day, what you generally see is about 16 teams compete in TI in varying degrees of format over a varying length of time to crown the champion. The champion then becomes the world champion of Dota. And a side fact for you guys, if you did not know this, because uh, it took me almost six months to figure it out, when you play your next match of Dota in the Ancient, 
uh, or in your base, there is a Aegis hanging on the wall above the shopkeeper. And if you ta if you hover over it with your mouse, it lists every TI winner to date. So that's a really cool feature that I think is a neat part of the game that a lot of folks don't even know exists. So definitely check that out. So this is to get yourself immortalized in print. And um, pretty excited. But here's the first question for you guys. Last year... TI, and we're not talking qualifiers, we're talking the big show in Seattle, ran, I think it was a little over two weeks. I mean, the thing went, it was long. I mean, we were talking about it earlier. The thing started in July 8th and went all the way, no, was it July 18th the thing went to? 10 days, is that correct? Uh, 22nd. 22nd. So from yeah. July 8th to the 22nd, this event went on. That is. Oh, a the, I'm sorry, the, the 21st, I think, was the last day of games. So so yeah, it, it went a long days. time. 14 days. Yep. That's a long event, and it was still 16 teams. This year, Valve has told us 16 teams, 7 days. What is? What do you think that means for the format? Uh, so th uh, that's the thing. I, I think that we're, we're obviously guessing at this point because uh, not only... Not only are we not going to be able to tell you anything, but at least as of a couple of weeks ago, uh, really nobody seemed to know anything about uh, the specifics in terms of what the qualifiers are going to look like, look mm -hmm. like, what the actual tournament format was going to look like. Uh, we're all kind of assuming at this point that it's going to be a different format from last year, that there might not be this, uh, this sort of long group phase with uh, a bubble race playoff at the end of the group phase. Uh, but I don't think anybody really knows for sure. Now, I think they're. I think they're gonna remove the bubble race, but I think those seven days are just for the main event. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like there's. I think they're still gonna have the big ass group stage where they're gonna have a round robin phase, but right. seven days is just for the main event. Seven days is just at Key Arena. So, so all everybody last year was complaining about how there was a lack of teams at Key Arena. Like people yeah, right. wanted to yeah. travel there to watch like Fanatic play, watch the Lions right. play. No, I, I think since, that's right. I think that's yeah. the biggest thing that mm -hmm. that that I think fans of all 16 teams ought to be able to travel to Seattle and actually see their team play on the big stage. I, I agree with that strongly. So your premise, Skim, or, or a possibility is that the seven days will be at key and perhaps the teams will fly out or even potentially come in mo uh, remotely to still have a group stage in the week leading up to TI. Yeah, I, mean, I assume so. I, I think uh, anything else wouldn't make as much sense just because I feel like for such a big event, I think you kind of need this extensive yeah. sort of, you know, uh, group stage. So, I don't know. I, that's at least what I heard, so I still assume that it's the case. Okay. Isn't the TI ticket for a week? It is. Yes. For seven days. Yes. Yeah. So, so that would make sense. It's at the key arena, right? Yeah. Yeah. So then, so there's a possibility that there will be some stuff probably to watch online. Um, I think that we'll know more when they announce it. We'll probably know a lot more once the talent announcements start to come out as well, um, and casters start to say, "Well, I'm planning. You know, we're going to be doing this for this period of time, etc." Um, and we sh we'll see. I think it also uh, there was a lot to be said for the hubs that sort of uh, sprung up around the playoff section, uh, the group stages. It was very popular with a lot of the fans, and yeah. I don't know that TI would take that away after the popularity that it saw last year. Uh, Kitten Cam was one of the most watched parts of TI. Uh, yeah. Take it or leave it. Cap had some good things to say about that on Twitter, if you don't remember. Um, but there were points where I tuned in when TI was over, and there was something in the ballpark of 60,000 people watching the Cats play. So, uh, you know, uh, side products of TI. Now, let's talk about the actual invite system. Uh, how many teams? I'm going to go right down the list here. I'll start with uh, Nahaz and roll right down. So Nahaz, Proxy, Skim. How many teams do you think will get direct invites or should get direct invites? And how many spots will be determined through the qualifiers? Uh, it's a tricky question to answer because there are a couple different criteria that you can use. Uh, and it's the same conversation that you end up having every year about the NCAA tournament and college basketball that, that – you know, a lot of people say, well, the purpose is to get the best 64 teams. And that's, that's obviously not true when you look at the constraints that are put on the invites and automatic bids, et cetera. Um, I don't think that, we're ne that the goal explicitly is necessarily to have the best 16 teams. Uh, I do think you need a balanced field. Remember, Valve is a business, and there needs to be, for the same reason that we were just talking about the fact that people, uh, fans of all 16 teams, yeah. should be able to come to the key arena, watch their teams play. Fans of each region do need to be able to, to be interested in the tournament. And so when I was going through it today, I, I spent a while, and I think I can put together a list of, of eight teams with each region representative that are pretty clearly deserving of automatic bids. Okay. And the problem from there is that when you go past eight, mm -hmm. 
mm. it starts to become very regionally imbalanced because I'm, I think the next the next three to five teams that you could make arguments for are three are from Europe, maybe even four, and and maybe one or two from China. Okay. Uh, yeah. Proxy? Yeah, I would agree that eight teams is like the, the perfect spot uh, for for sure deserve an invite and uh, very balanced uh, when it comes to region. And I think that uh, actually TI should focus on having the fans be happy because mm -hmm. the community pays 40, uh, yes, 40 millions uh, for this event, right? Mm -hmm. Because 25 went to the, to the prize pool and it was 10 million. So I think we should be pretty happy with the tournament, right? <laughs> Absolutely. No, I mean, I think that is a big part of it. And uh, Skim, I'll jump in real quick before we jump to go to you. I think that we can all remember the statement. Uh, Valve did an interview, or, or one of the rare times that Valve tells us what they're thinking. And so one of the reasons they put TI on in the first place was they sat down and they said, our player base has been phenomenal. They're really supportive. What can we do to say thank you to them? And they said, well, I think that a tournament like TI would be the best way to thank the fans. And I think to me, that speaks volumes towards regionally deserved invites because they want to say thank you to all of the fans, not just right. fans who live in the countries with the best teams. Uh, Skip, yeah. I'm sorry that I jumped in. What were you going to say? No, no problem, no problem. Um, I've, I've talked about this a lot, and I think like you guys have a valid point that, sure, the international should give back to the fans, give back to the community that created the, this beautiful game because ultimately Dota is a product of a community. But I feel like at this point, we've also reached yeah, a point where it's not really... You can't really give like... I almost want to say pity invites or like just, you know, oh, we kind of have to tender or cater towards a certain community, so let's extend an invite to this team or just to this area because we feel like this region deserves um, um, an invite. Because if, if we look at the numbers, like, yeah, sure, we contributed like 40 million, but it's also like 40 million that we're playing around with. We can't just say, okay, we're just going to pass off 10 million to this team or like 5 million to this team because, you know, they got just, uh, they just have a region that's so... <laughs> dedicated to this to this game. So I feel like, yeah, but at the same time, I kind of want the best 16 teams in the world, so... No, that's still think, right. Yeah, I still think eight teams is totally fine as, as, uh, as an invite, but I feel like there should be a more extensive qualifier than there used to be. I so eight, eight, uh, eight invites, totally fine with that, but the qualifiers have to, have to be a bit more extensive than they used to be. Okay, so are you... Are any of you advocating for this eight invite position? Has everybody said mm -hmm. eight here? Are you, is it, do any of you advocate that those eight invites should be divided up by region, so two from each region, or do you think it's just that should be top eight teams, no questions asked? I mean, so I, I again, I hate to keep making the college basketball analogies, but I, I, I think it's appropriate here that everybody every year makes a big deal about how many bids, the how many tournament bids the Big Ten gets versus the right. ACC versus, and it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, the selection committee every year keeps telling people. We don't look at regions. We look at the best teams. Mm. And I think there's an argument for that. But fortunately, as I said, I think you can put together a list of eight teams. And depending on how you count C9, so I'm going to go ahead and count C9 as an NA team. It falls out to <gasps> three. I know. I know. I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. It, 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 you, you start to get you – can, you can start – you can get three <clears throat> Chinese teams – um, three European teams, e.g. and and I'm sorry, I, I said I was counting them. I'm going to count them as an EU team this year because they only have one NA player. Sorry about okay, that. Okay, okay, that's okay. Fine. I was like, so you get three EU, three Chinese, one SEA, and one NA. And I think that hmm. you know. I think that feels right, and I think you yeah. can make a reasonable case that those are the eight best teams. Well, anyway. I think you make a reasonable case that. Uh, those are not only the three eight best teams, but they're representative of the growth of Dota, too, in, in a sense, right? Two years ago, the idea of an SEA team and an NA team having an automatic invite to the finals in a top eight situation would have been a much longer shot than it is today. So we've seen that growth. I, I just don't think that there were two or even one NA team that was just mind-blowingly good two or three years ago at the level that we were seeing CIS in China. I could be wrong, but that's just my my feelings on the matter. I think that growth has been big in those regions, but they're still not as popular as they are in the CIS and the Chinese region, or the European region as well. Um, do you guys, what do you think, Proxy? Yeah, I mean, I agree with Nahas completely, actually, that uh, if you take 
uh, those eight teams. They will be probably the best, depending on what you count as bigger achievement than the other. And they represent every region, and they also uh, represent how how each region is strong right now. So I think that, that's the best. And I think that uh, like when you go to the ninth best team, the best team, tenth best team, uh, they don't they don't really meet from like Europe to China. So it's really hard to decide decide which team is better and which we should invite and which which should go to the qualifiers. Okay. Is any last thoughts before we move into actual talking about regions and who deserves invites and who's going to quals? Uh, I agree with Nahas, but just because it works out this year, like, mm. if, if, if it was the case that the 10 best teams or the 8 best teams happen to just only come out of Europe and China, which will never happen, but if in theory that was the case, I don't think we should say, okay, we have 3-3-1-1-1, three, three, one, 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 which is, mm. you know, it works out this year, so that's okay. fine. So it's fortunate fortunate for the fans that at least you know you'll have somebody that you get to watch. And obviously qualifiers means somebody else gets to go into. Um, that said, let's start breaking into some region stuff. I mean, what I want to do is I want to talk about that top eight and then sort of who goes where after that. And I think that that may be best done by going through sort of the regional sections of the team, saying, all right, here are the teams uh, that are most well represented or most known from individual regions. Do you think, what do you think that they deserve when it comes to TI. Now, for those of you who are listening to the show, a lot of our fans, a lot of our listeners are uh, North American. Uh, we get a lot of European and Australian fans. So for some of you guys, some of these scenes we're gonna talk about are a little bit foreign, but I want you to stick with me because I think, especially when we get to the SEA, there are some teams that are going to surprise you when we get to TI. If you haven't already caught some of these teams play in the last month, you're gonna be blown away when we get there because in the past, in tournaments, uh, what was, I'm sorry, I think it might have been ESL a couple of a month or two ago. There and a couple of other tournaments, I feel like the SEA teams are often sort of looked over by the rest of the teams. They're sort of expected to fall out early in the round, if that makes sense, go to the loser's bracket in the first two. Um, and I think that there's some teams coming out that are going to be really, really strong. So let's jump off with this. Let's get going. Uh, in fact, I'm going to open up with the SEA. Well, I'm going to open up with SEA because I think that uh, they're underrepresented and they deserve a jump off spot here. So, right. let's talk about the teams out of the SEA. I'm going to name off eight teams that I think are most representative of the potential to go to this event. If there's one that I'm missing, I want you to go ahead and add that and let me know. Uh, but first off, we've got Rave, we've got Maneski, Can't Say Whips, 5 Eva, Invasion Esports, MVP Phoenix, MVP Hot 6, Arcanis, and then we're going to throw Malaysia into that mix because uh, they've come out swinging and proven that they are probably one of the greatest teams uh, out there right now uh, in that region. So, any other teams on that list that I need to add, do you think? Okay, so let's let's roll right down. When we talk about qualifiers uh, and invites, do any of these teams stand out as a top eight guaranteed invite team? Yeah, so I, I think I can make a case for Team Malaysia as yeah. being uh, among the top eight uh, that ought to be invited. And I think it's important when we talk about this, uh, Valve invites players, mm -hmm. okay? They don't invite teams, all right? The invites go directly to the players. They get invited to come to Seattle to compete with the four other members of their current roster. There's nothing to my – I just got told this a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. but there's nothing that ever goes to the sponsoring organization. Mm -hmm. The correspondence is with the players. And I think when you look at Team Malaysia, okay, so, so the first checkbox to me – when you're thinking about how Valve does things, and again, this relates to what the fans want to see as well, I think, but you look at, you look at their pedigree, and they've got three out of five members from uh, Orange that finished third at TI3. They've got Mushi, KYXY, and Ohio. Uh, over the last six weeks, since March 15th, they're 31-10 and 10 in pro matches, so they're 75.6%. They're uh, that's behind only VG during that period. Uh, they did. They came out at Star Series and this last weekend, and they looked like they belonged. Okay, they didn't do great, but they finished fifth place, tied with Alliance, and they took out Secret in a series. Mm -hmm. uh, they are a top five team, so again, it kind of depends how much weight you want to give this. But right. uh, according to our friend Knoxville's Elo tracking, they are top five. Now again, wow. Elo is a point in time snapshot. You can't read too much into mm -hmm. that. But right now, they are looking very strong. And again, there has been at least one SEA team, I believe, invited to every one of the yep. TIs. Last year, there was Titan. And I think you can make a good enough case 
uh, for Malaysia that that Valve is going to do those SEA fans uh, a service and go ahead and invite that team. I mean, you you. Okay. No one is going to argue with inviting Mushi, for goodness sake. Right. So Team Malaysia comes off a Nahaz uh, skim agreement. Do you think they get, they get a top eight invite? I, th I hate to agree with Nahaz, honestly. Not because it's Nahaz, <laughs> but because... I, Everybody I, does. Don't worry. I dislike, I dislike the fact that Malaysia is most likely to be invited, honestly, um, because it sucks for Rafe. Because Rafe, in my book, was the top contender for C invite, but then boom. Team Malaysia comes along and they play really well and then they do well at Starletter and I, I feel like Rave just hadn't had the chance to prove themselves much after the AC, yeah. um, mostly because they were denied yeah. their visa for MLG, which hurt Agreed. them a lot. Because if they had been I really at, at MLG, they would have prob. I mean, they would have had a chance to prove themselves at least, you know. And now it's up to Malaysia that got the chance and they did really well at Starletter and just like Nahas said, just because. They're a star little lineup. They have so many veterans in their lineup. They have so many proven players with Mushi and with in, in Ohio. And as he said, it's more like a, about inviting the players or about in, inviting you know um, the team or like the team as in as in like these five players. And it feels like this is going to be Malaysia's invite for sure, honestly. So and that's just so on the right. I mean, I guess. On one side, you have Team Malaysia, which is a team that has sort of come together almost in a reunion format to put up some really great numbers in the SEA, right? And, and that sort of feels a bit uh, homage to, say, Team Tinker moving to the North American region, heading to a place where they can do well as we head into TI. On the other side, you have Rave, which is a team that has been really grinding yeah. it out and making a name for themselves, who, honestly, I think uh, Summit is on its way in next, what, two weeks from now? Rave is going to be there. I think that they're going to do a really good job, and it's just a shame that they won't be able to show that until after TI invites are issued. So well, that remember, be remember in the past, the the problem is we don't have a good picture of of what the time frame is going to look like when exactly the qualifiers are going to start because we're going to you know the bids sure. need to be issued in advance of the qualifiers. Remember in the right. past, we have had a little bit of a staggered timeline. True. When we found out about these bids, and some of that is probably just due to documentation or whatever, but um, I, I wouldn't completely. There, so let me actually let me put this to my other two panelists. Okay, to me there are two other teams from this region that that you can talk about in terms of maybe deserving uh, a direct invite, and I, I don't think it's going to happen. But there's one other team that certainly deserves to be in the conversation, mm -hmm. and I would even say there's one more beyond that that you could make a case for. I, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you guys, what do you think? If you had to name two more teams that should be in the conversation, what would they be for you? Outside, okay. of, outside of Rave and Malaysia? One, so if you had to add one more, who would it be? Oh, okay. Well, I guess you're going MVP to MVP Phoenix. Yeah, I guess you're steering the discussion towards MVP Phoenix, but I didn't. I'm not. Tr I'm not trying to lead you guys in, in necessarily yeah. in that direction. But, but in, quite in terms, terms of a top though, eight invite, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, but can I make a stop? Because I actually believe that Rafe deserves the, the invite over Team Malaysia. Let's, let's. I was hoping somebody would make that case because I, I actually really, I really like Rave a lot. I think those guys play their asses off, and, and, and your description of them, Toffees, is as a team that sort of grounded out yeah. and really represented the region. I think that's very accurate. Mm. I was hoping somebody might make a case for Rave, so I want to hear this yeah. proxy. Yeah, okay. So, uh, number one, uh, Valve values stability very mm. much, mm. and Rave has been a super stable team. Mm. They have swapped one player, who is now their manager, and it was like months ago. Mm. And since then, they've been top four in I League. They surprised beating some European team. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But they've been top four there. Plus, they've been top six at the DAC. They've almost beaten Big God, which is like amazing. No one expected that, right? Right. They've been dominating in CA, uh, CA region for like months. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, Valve always gave invites to teams that were stable, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if Fnatic and uh, Dignitas mm -hmm. sticked for a year, they didn't have amazing results, but yeah, they were but invited because they I, stick together, right? I think they did. Sure. I, I, don't, I don't buy that analogy, though. I think, that, I think when, you, when you point to Fnatic and when you point to Dignitas, the, the results were a little bit more there. And I, I agree with Skim's point that, that 
the visa issues have really hurt them because I think mm -hmm. a, a top three finish, which I don't think was unrealistic, by the way. I think I think Rave could have done pretty well in Ohio, mm -hmm. and yeah, I, definitely. I I think a top three finish there, a top four finish there would have really helped them. Uh, but that didn't happen, and the fact is, you know, they're only twenty and seventeen mm -hmm. since March first. Uh, they they've qualified for the Summit Three. I'm really curious to see what they did there. They were they. I mean, this team finished yeah. fi in fifth place, tied with C9 at DAC, right? Right. I, on paper, they're a team that has a pretty strong case. I just don't know that the that the resume is quite there. Okay. I mean, Jo is the only player that they've right. got that's been to a TI before, and he okay, was at he was at TI two with Complexity. But one more thing. Uh, it, it was also proven in the past that uh, Valve values uh, LAN performance, mm -hmm. right? And, yeah, I mean, yes and, and no, right? Team Maldives, yes, for sure. Like, do you remember when KP wasn't invited and that Russian team, I don't know... IC uh, Cup. Yeah, IC Cup was oh. invited. Well, yeah, That's, sure. I think... I think you can't actually like compare that situation to now because right. it was a toss up and it was for qualifiers uh which right. were you know which were exactly. you know at that time at that time there were only a few teams that were actually got invited to qualify so I think it was like eight or something so in um, the interest of moving forward and I'm going to ask yeah, you this let's, 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 let's let me, ask let me just do this I will say uh, we do a media poll and we're, it's, it's currently weekly because it's an experiment. We're going to expand that out to once a month just to sort of keep things going. But what we did with this media poll is we figured it's really hard to compare uh, teams that never really play each other in terms of visibility and rankings. Yes. So we asked a bunch of people in the media, a bunch of people who watch Dota for a living essentially, to vote on teams in a stack ranking to give us an idea of sort of how they stack up against each other. Team Malaysia last week came in ranked at 11. They've been slowly climbing this list. Rave has been sitting between 18 and 19 for the last three weeks. Now, based on what you guys have said, Rave is a really strong team, and they've put up good showings. Do you think that Valve is going to take this sort of fans view or media view, which is, well, MY has bigger names. I call it the, I call it the Tony, I used to call it the, the Kelly Slater effect, um, but a lot of folks don't know Kelly Slater. He's a <laughs> surf guy. Um, he's, it's the Sean White effect is for all you young folks. Oh. The idea that Sean White is no longer on the top of his game, maybe he's not the best snowboarder out there, but he's the legend, the one who was sort of the starter of the sport. Everyone knows who he is. And as a result, he tends to get bumped up a couple of places. He tends to get invited to events no matter what. Do you think MY gets that that invite over Rave because of the fact that they've got Mushi? Or do you I, think no, that Rave could get it? No, I think it's I think it's the I think it's the combination of the two. I think that that viewed alone, the fact that Team Malaysia have been just on fire for the past six weeks. And the fact that they traveled to Star Ladder and they, they did well, they looked like they belonged mm -hmm. among top teams there, that by itself would probably not be enough to override Rave's steady record. Mm -hmm. And the names by themselves. I, I think this year that the names by themselves would not be enough. Mm -hmm. But I think when you put the two together, the fact that you've got these great recognizable names and the fact that you have this recent performance that's really indicative. I mean, they look like a top team okay. when you watch them play. I think the two together is enough to get them to Seattle. All right, so I think that go if ahead. anything carries them, it's the names and their online record, because well, I but, disagree that their star line But look at it, but look at it last year, okay? Last year, I just looked at this before the show, when Newbie were invited, mm. Newbie's record as a professional team on the day that they were invited to TI4 was 34 and 50. Hmm. Valve so, values names. So let's say this. Nahaz, uh, invite for direct. Direct invite Rave and MY or just one of the – or pick one of the two. I, I think it's – I unfortunately, I think it's going to be one. I'd love to see both there. And which one's it going to be? Uh, it's going to be Malaysia. All right. Proxy? Uh, I think it's going to be one. It's going to be Rave. You think it's going to be rave? Not just uh, yes. not just altruistic thinking. You think it's actually no. going to be rave? Yes, yes. I think that DAC top five DAC teams all will be invited. I like that. All right, uh, Skim. Uh, I don't think that Valve can actually afford to give C two direct invites, so it's just going to be one. It's going to be Malaysia. 
Okay, so we've got two Malaysia, one Rave. Uh, I am going to stand by Malaysia because I truly believe in the Sean White effect. And uh, I think it'll continue as we go through the other regions. So let's talk real quick about qualifiers in the SEA scene. Um, we have a rough idea of which teams are probably going to go. I would assume that the qualifiers will follow a similar schedule to it has in the past. Um, teams that will likely emerge in the final four uh, from our discussion, it sounds like we can agree that it's going to be Rave or MY, whichever doesn't get the direct invite. Um, then very likely MVP Phoenix. And who do you think will be the other top two teams in the SA SEA region? It's difficult to say right now because I feel like in the SEA region, outside of Rave, MVP Phoenix, and Malaysia, most teams are pretty weak. And it's not really clear cut to say who's like tiered above the other. If it was Europe, I think it would be much easier. But for C, it's a bit more difficult. But I'm going to go with Mineski because they have more experience. Mm -hmm. And. Icon is because they have a lot of potential. Okay, so let, let's say this then, to make it easy and save time. Is there anybody else besides those three teams that you think is relevant in the TI discussion at the moment? And that's the no. problem is that I think, I, think, I think you could say no or I think you could say all of them. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at, again, you know, if you look at Knoxville when he's tracking ELO changes across right. teams, the volatility of week-to-week mm -hmm. -week ELO changes in SEA is like, is like twice the other regions. I mean, that that it's not necess it, It's not just that some of those teams can look really weak. It's that the results are just incredibly volatile. Like I, I would never bet on those games in Dota right. Two Lounge, for example. And that's that's part of why I think it's that region in terms of who's going to be a factor in the qualifiers is the, is the most difficult to call. Absolutely. Now, I think that MVP Hot 6 is an argument to be made for that as well as Mineski, but I think that we're right. I think that there's three. We know of two that have a very good chance of being in TI. And honestly, I'll go on the record and say whichever one gets the direct invite, whether it's Malaysia or Rave, I feel strongly that the other will earn their way in. And oh, that, yeah. that the oh, two yeah. of them will be representative of the SEA in the big show. So uh, does anybody else have any other big uh, declarations they want to make about the SEA before we move to a new region? Well, I, I will add quickly, let's not, let's not go ahead and assume that it's going to only be True. one other team from SEA. Fair point. I think, there is, I think there is a chance that you might see two qualifier spots uh, come from that region, but we'll, we'll, we can talk about that a little later if you guys want. So That's we just, bold. So it's, it's a bold. So do you think, and we'll just, let me ask you this. Uh, it sounds, Nahaz, like you're taking the idea that there may be two spots given to each of the four regions. Is that correct? Yeah. Unfortunately, so I mean, this is a conversation that we can get it. We can postpone to later in the show if you want to. But here's the thing: I and I think the majority of people in the scene, be they casual fans, be they casters, whatnot, would prefer to see all of these qualifiers run on land. Mm -hmm. the, this is it's it's a ten million dollar plus tournament. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is no reason that we should have server issues affecting the outcomes of these games. That said, we gentlemen are at the eleventh hour right now. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that there's enough time. If you're going to have these qualifiers in another week or two, I don't think that there's enough time to coordinate all the travel necessary to get these teams even to a regional land. And once you say that qualifiers are going to be played offline mm -hmm. i think that almost locks you into regions now i do think i do think there's a possibility you might see a little bit of juggling that the eu might get more bids yeah but i think there's a very real possibility that you might see two qualifier bids out of sea I, honestly i think historically based on valve's uh tournament system and what we've seen in the past i feel pretty strongly that We'll see invites, direct invites not affected by region necessarily as far as fairness goes, but I think that we'll probably see two qualifiers from each of the individual regions when it comes to that. My other, if, if I had to take a gut guess right now, if you put a gun to my head and made me guess, my guess would be that you're going to see 1133 for the four regions mm -hmm. uh, in, terms of, Invite. in terms of the direct invites. And I actually think if you made me guess right now, I think you're going to see one, one, three, three in the qualifiers too. Really? But but if you may, that's again, nobody has any idea as far as I'm aware how these qualifiers are going to work. But if you made me guess, I would say that they're. It just has a certain symmetry to it. I think they're going to do that for both the direct invites and for the online qualifiers. Okay. Uh, Proxy skim. Do you guys think one, one, three, three for qualifiers or two, 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 two? I think the is forgetting about the wildcard play-ins or playoffs at, at the event itself 
Mm. I think so, they're gonna... so are you going to... So okay, all right, go ahead. Yeah, I think they're just going to repeat it because it's proven to be pretty... Okay. A pretty good system, honestly. Honest, and I, I still love it. I mean, yeah, I, I know why a lot of people hate it because the team that eventually qualifies has the least amount of uh, ch chance to actually make it an event because every team has to have the chance to, to sculpt them properly. But overall, I, f I think you it's... Know, I, I think that that's not, to me, the big thing. The, to me, I think part of the point this year of having a 16-team week-long main event is that every team that travels to Seattle gets to compete on stage at Key. And I, I, I don't, I mean, I, I get why it makes sense. I don't like the sort of play-in format. I think, I think you have 1-1-3-3 one, one, three, three for the direct invites, 1-1-3-3 one, one, three, three for the qualifiers, chips fall. Okay. May, I mean, if you want to have, if you want to have uh, uh, like one more region, if you want to have like one more wild card team from each region, so it ends up being, it ends up being two two four four for the qualifiers, and you have the four playing teams again. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Interesting, guys. Do you think uh, one one three three two 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 three 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 three? What do you, what do you have any opinions on that? Skip? I think we can only Honestly. guess actually. Yeah. yeah. So, so like... no point guessing, as as Charlie would say. I won't say anything if I don't know it by fact, right? Or, uh, or if I can't make fun of Gerg's selfies. I think those wow. are his two favorite things. Uh, so, okay, let's, uh, let's keep rolling forward then. We've covered SCA. I think we have a pretty good idea of which teams are likely to be picked up. Uh, keep in mind, guys, this is going to come out in the next two or three days anyway, most likely. So uh, it, this is really all conjecture. Uh, but I think I want to talk about the teams so that you sort of know who to watch as we roll into this thing. Now let's talk about American qualifiers. Uh, we'll work our way up to the big dogs. Now... Let's start with this. Uh, we'll go down the line. Do you think that there's going to be one spot or two for direct invites? And if you think, and who do you think's getting that spot? I we'll think this is the biggest slam dunk ever. Mm -hmm. Okay, proxy. I mean, if NA gets two spot, I quit Dota. If it's two spot, I quit Dota. All right. I'm not gonna go that far. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody says they quit. I, I quit Dota four times a night. Uh, Skim, what's your? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, me too. I actually even think that, honestly, the NA region is so weak, I would actually even find it unfair if the qualifier winner got a direct uh, spot at TI, to be honest, because I oh, feel that's, like... that's... No, I, I, wouldn't, I won't go with that. I, f I feel like there's... I don't know, I feel like he sh uh, That's my opinion anyway, but yeah, I think it's clear that EG is definitely up there uh, as the direct invite, but as for qualifier, it's probably just between Team Tinker and not today. Okay. Uh, so I think that we can all agree, direct invite uh, EG, number one. Is there anybody else that even is close to possibly getting a direct invite, or is it everyone else going through no. qualifiers? Okay, so everybody goes through qualifiers. Let's talk about the top teams in the North American region. Um, my list that I've put together for, I think, the people with the best shot at making it is not today. Uh, Void Boys, Leviathan, Will Wreck While Whistling, Ehug, is having a hard time, Complexity, Evil Geniuses. There's an argument you made maybe for Boreal Esports. Um, and then I think the other one, the Sleeper Cell, that we haven't really talked about or seen a lot of is Nar V 2.0 or Nar 2.0. I'll keep calling him Nar. Yeah. That's the so so to me if the if the NA qualifiers started tomorrow mm -hmm. I think Team Tinker would be the the Tinker, heavy sorry. favorites uh, they I, I I think and I I realize there are a lot of people I've seen a lot of not today with the new roster I think they're very good uh, I like them a lot I I don't think they're I. I think Tinker's a much better team. I just think they're much, much better. I mean, the two, the first two head-to-head -head matchups that we saw between those teams were stomps. They were not close. And this is where, you know, I, I've talked to Scan about this. We have a disagreement about this. Uh, but I think you head-to-head -head record in general as a statistical tiebreaker is not the best thing. But I think you have to look at the actual games. You have to, like, I spend more time watching, re a lot more time watching replays than I do looking at numbers. And when you actually watch those games, Team Tinker was a much better team. All right, in those so games. I'm I'm getting a lot of lashback already in Twitch chat for not naming people or naming people uh, on that. Oh long yeah, yeah. List. Rift but should Rift should be on that. Rift list should be sure. in there. You could argue that Root, Root should be maybe. there too. I mean, you know, here, here's the argument. Okay, here's the deal. Out of those teams, there's a bunch of North American teams, and you can argue. I can say this, and I can say it confidently because I cover the North American scene a lot. They are the North American scene. In if you were to insulate it, and it was just playing each other. 
there's some really good competition among itself in North America. There is a lot of talent a on the individual player level that, but on the uh, and like, there is no region mm -hmm. where the whole is so much less than the sum of its parts. Right. Then is and I, these players are really good. Now when we like, talk, I, they're real. I mean, Ush is really good. Right. When you look at the numbers. It, it, the the for whatever reason and we all you know let's get Trauf on here to talk about it because I think <laughs> I, he gives the best explanation of anybody that I've seen but there are a number of ex possible explanations but for whatever reason the the my perceived level of the talent of these players which is very high it does not come across when you watch the teams in action right. playing so, five on five Dota the only team that's even mentioned on the media poll is Team Tinker. Everybody else not even put into the vote system uh, anywhere near there. Do not you today, guys? Not today deserves a mention. But. Not to, not today does deserve a mention. They don't get yeah. ranked. They don't get voted very often. They they were on there the first week and then sort of fell off. The question and, is not today and I not today and Tinker I think are the front runners in this discussion. Well, and you and you 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 do. It's been a bit unfortunate. Uh, uh, Narvi V two or not uh, <laughs> NARV two. Right. Uh, has only had like 10 games, I think. Yep. They've had some connection issues. Um, so we haven't really been able to see them as a team. I, I love that roster. Mm -hmm. I really do. And Rift, I mean, Rift is 19-9 and nine right. since, uh, I believe, over the past six weeks. I mean, they haven't been bad. But again, it, it's just, it's so inconsistent. The Dota, if you actually watch the games, is just, it's wildly inconsistent from game to game. So let's ask this. Top 20, or uh, not top 20, top two. Let's say the two, two qualifiers get a chance to go, whether that's to a wild card fight in a spot, whether that's just a straight spots. Let's say two North American teams get a chance to make it into TI based off the well, back two, of the Two America's teams, because we are taught, we're going yes, to include Isurus and Pink Gaming. And, yep. Yep. So America's teams, uh, the, our entire region, which two teams taking EG out because they're already in uh, with the slam dunk, which two teams do you think qualify? Go ahead, guys. Uh, Tinker and I think Root could upset people. I mean, they did mm. did that just today. I think they qualified for Red Bull Battleground or something. So, yeah. they are in grand finals. I think not qualified yeah. yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Prost. but go ahead. But I think Tinker and Summoner's Rift actually. Okay. I, I'm still gonna go with. I'm still gonna be boring and go with Tinker and not today. I feel like. Uh, I feel like those two teams are the only two that have the combination of talent and, and stability. I, I would really dearly love to see Rift and, uh, and NA, NAR especially. I, I really want that team to do well. But we just, with, with the connection issues, unfortunately, we, just, we haven't gotten to see necessarily a picture of what that team could be. I think, I think Tinker, for sure, in my opinion. And if the tournament is done offline, I think NR, NAR 2.0. If it's not, um, I think that not today could very well take that position. Now, here's a side note, and we're gonna but we're gonna talk about it very briefly. Do I don't know that it, that is fair as somebody who follows the America scene very closely, obviously uh, for the show and for casting purposes. Oof. Until about two months ago, I thought it would probably be uh, not today and one other team. Team Tinker all of a sudden enters the mix. They make a move to Canada. They bring Black over. Is that okay? Or is that sort of a searching for the ringer spot? Yeah, that's a, that's somebody in chat just referred to that as, as the elephant in the room. I mean, mm -hmm. in my in my view, if if you're willing to... I mean, I believe Black is has resided in Canada at least before, has he not? I'm not sure. But, I mean, my view, if you're willing to bring your players over and compete... That's okay, that's okay with you? So uh, wherever you sort of practice, you should be able to play? Because if that's the case, there's a lot of CIS teams that are packing their bags and moving to <laughs> SCA in North America next year. I, I mean, I, I, I'd i love to see it. This is it. Look, this is a... This is... It's a natural step in the... Evol Everybody acts like that's such a horror... Look, it's a natural step in the evolution of a lot of different competitive sports that they become truly international. That kids from Russia come over and they train at Nick Baltieri's tennis academy in the States. Yeah, but... Great, let's do it, man. Bring it on. But, but that I'm only makes, that makes everybody better, in my but opinion. But the organization doesn't move, right? I mean, I don't follow... Uh, I don't follow... Roma or, or, or uh, some of the European soccer leagues outside of EPL, but I know that there's, there's three or four teams hey. in the Euro leagues that could easily move to the EPL and dominate it, but hey, they can't do that. We're still in a position in Dota... 
where we can't get our players visas gotcha. to compete in LAN events. If, 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 if some of these teams want to move over to, to North America and compete and win and be able to go to LAN events and raise the level of play at LANs, hell yes. Fair. Uh, Proxy, what's your opinion? Yeah, that? I'm going to tell you that no CS team will move to Canada ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> you know why? You, why is that? Ouch. Because they earn like six times more while they live in CS. Fair enough. Uh, do you think it's fair that Tinker made that choice? Yes, I think it's okay. I mean, they moved all the players and they live there. And, uh, like, two players are actually from that region. Mm. I think that's okay. Uh, what do you think, Skim? I mean, as long as there's no rule set, everything is fair game, right? Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. It, we had an interesting side. discussion about rules just this afternoon, didn't we, Nahas? So, uh, mm -hmm. if it's not there, then the value of rules, right? If it's not there, what can you do? So, no, and, I, and I think that, again, we, we talked about that the other night with, with Gerg, that uh, that's one of the big things that is going to need to be hashed out before we, we start talking about majors, is, is there's going to need to be some, along with restriction of roster changes needs to come some uniformity in terms of what team is considered competing in which region. If indeed we're going to keep regions going right. forward. And that's another interesting discussion. Um, our region, I mean, right now, right, regions are just a server that you tend to play on more often. Yeah. Than so I, I see where we're and coming that's, from. And there's, that. been, and there's been plenty of suggestions uh, from, from the online community that I'm very sympathetic with mm -hmm. that, hey, look, you know what? Let's allow whatever teams to play in whatever qualifiers that they want to, and huh. we'll just div divvy up spots in the number of teams. Now, I, I frankly, I don't like that suggestion right. because I think that that potentially hurts the quality of the product. I think at right. the end of the day, you got to think about the quality of the Dota. Plus, we have, a, after, we, have, plus we have a really Chinese heavy TI. Uh, because they just move from region to region, destroying everybody. No, Come on. no. Okay, you know what? Let's do this. Let's, let's make this transition. Let's, let's make this transition. We're going to talk about the Chinese region right now. Yeah, yeah. This, let's is, a talk about this is a strong region, and I stand by that. Come on. What do you, okay. what do you mean, come on? Come. Did you watch DAC? Okay, so they didn't perform what as well as they could have at DAC. They didn't perform as well as they could have? But that was prior did shuffle. You, did that you was watch, pre shuffle, not Did us. you watch DAC? That was pre shuffle. Okay. Did you watch Star Letter? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I watched Star Letter. You know what happened at Star Letter? <laughs> the two best teams were 1 2. The two best teams happened to be Chinese, and they came in first and second place. Okay. You, you think LGD so? comes over and finishes third? Uh, does LGD come over and finish third? No. Uh, do they finish? Let's see. Fourth, they they finish, finish tied. Uh, they uh, do they finish ahead of C9? No, I don't think they do. Did they finish uh, ahead of Alliance and Malaysia? Yeah. So I think that yeah, I think they'd have been uh, tied for fifth. All right, so uh, let's do this. Chinese teams, how many direct invites do you think come out of the Chinese region? Three? Uh, proxy? Scam, what do you think? Uh, I would like to start this discussion with uh, do we invite uh, the previous champion? That's fair. That's fair. Does one of the direct okay. invites get guaranteed? Because we can, let, let's put this on the table. If it was not a guaranteed invite, do you think Newbie would get a direct invite to TI based on performance? No. Okay. Oh, I think God all of us no. would say no. All of us would say God no. Do you think that they will? I, I am, I, as of today, I am leaning toward no. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I am actually thinking that they shouldn't get it, and I really hope they won't. Yes, yeah, same here. Okay. So, well, so I mean, let's let's lay it out. Okay, let's lay it out because the 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 real issue, and I think God's tweeted something about this the other day that um, that he hoped that Valve would consider all performance since TI4 mm. and not just performance in the last three months. Mm. And, and, and if you consider all performance since TI4, Newbie has not a bad case because people <laughs> may not remember, they actually they went on from TI4 and right. they continued to kick a fair amount of ass. Yeah. So, I mean, Newbie was very good through the end of last year. The problem is they have absolutely fallen apart this year. I mean, they are they are 21 and 29 since March 1st, and that is that represents a substantial improvement relative to what we saw before that. They embarrassed themselves at right. DAC. So they were two and 13. They have won outside of DAC. So they won they won thirty thousand dollars or th uh, just under thirty one thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Okay, 
for for finishing two and thirteen. They won thirty one thousand dollars for winning two games at DAC. Not a bad per game payout. Okay, how much money other than that? How much money have newbie won playing Dota two this year? I, I have no idea, but I mean, I, we can all we can all agree that back end zero end of the year dollars terrible, right? I mean, it's bad. It's been it's bad. I, I I look this this team, and again, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back to the point that newbie were 34 and 50 as a team when they were invited to TI4 last year. Mm -hmm. So there's some precedent for inviting names, and this this does this roster does have three out of five players. From last year's TI4 champs, they had they have Zachiji who finished uh, fifth place LGD. They have June who was with the playing team CIS. So th these are all four, all five of these players were in Seattle playing last year. So, but let me ask I, you this. I don't think you can invite a team that outside of an event where they embarrass themselves. Right. Well, let me, I, let according me to Datota anyway. Let they me ask have you this, Nahas. Zero dollars. Nahas and the rest of you. Let me ask you this. I think we can all agree that they're not deserving of a direct invite in the sense of performance. They also, if you direct invite them because of grandfather clauses, that takes a spot away from a performing team. Do you think Valve can justify, if Skim is right and we see a wild card playoff, them getting an automatic wild card bid as the defending champions? Would that be offensive or would that be the best way for them to possibly do this? Because they can't win the qualifiers. I don't think like they, they would get dominated by LGD, no. Ehome, Tong Fu, HGT. Oh, like all whoa, of these teams whoa, are better. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, LGD's LGD is a direct invite. You think friend. you think so you think three are coming out? LGD, VG, oh, yeah. and IG? Okay. Oh yeah. I, I I think again, statistically, Vici Gaming in, in is is the number one I mean, you can argue mm -hmm. between Vici, Vici and E. G. But VG is to me the top team in the world right now. All right. Again, I, I would actually I think it's dead even if you talk if you gave me a land best of three mm -hmm. between EG and Vici Gaming. I think it's dead even. I think in any other format as online, I think VG is a slightly better team right now. I think IG and LGD you can make an ironclad statistical case that those teams belong direct invites, and I don't think there's even a question. Okay, uh, PL Skim, do you agree with that? Those three teams getting ironclad invites. Yes. For okay. Sure. So let's no, talk about the qualifiers. I think there's no argument about those three. They've, they've proven time and again how good they are. I think there was interesting that at the initial Chinese shuffle, there was a lot of discussion about whether or not LGD would be as good as they've proven themselves to be. And boy, they've, I think mm. they've come away really well. Uh, well, it's a, it's a little bit crazy because I had that question in my mind too. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you look at, I mean, you look at their current roster, right. MMY and Yao played on opposite sides last year uh, of, of LGD and DK finishing fourth and fifth. You got Zhao8 who won. You've got Siler who finished second with yep. Vici Gaming. And, and I mean, that's, that's so let's So let's say two more teams come out through qualifiers. This is a tough one, right? There are, I would say, teams that can be competitive in the back end of the qualifiers. We've got Ehome. Uh, we've got yeah. Hyperglory team. We've got C Deck Gaming, who's also been really good lately. Tong Fu could put up an argument to be in that mix. Uh, which of those? Two, which two teams do you think could potentially come out of qualifiers? I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be an interesting qualifier for sure because I feel like there's a lot of teams that have the potential to also scratch at if there were more direct invites, a scratch at a direct invite. So I'm going to I'm gonna say I think Ehome and HGT are going to be the top teams of that qualifier. PL? Mm, I mean, I think Ehome will be up there, and I would like to say HGT, because they are very stable, and they, I think they try really hard to be a good team, but they tend to choke, and I'm like... Yeah. I think someone will beat them. I'm not sure who, but I think they won't. They want to qualify. Okay. Yeah. Ehome is the one team to me behind the big three that, uh, if if you started talking about if Valve were to go with eleven invites yeah. last year, which would be the next Chinese team off the list? I think Ehome probably has. I mean, you look at Lanham and DDC. You look at ROTK. I think Ehome would probably be the next team that you'd talk about, uh, at least if you weren't going to give the sympathy bid to newbie. Right. Uh, the issue is Ehome has not been that good recently. They're, they're 29 and 34 since since March 1st, and a lot of that, of course, is is getting killed by the big three. Right. But but still, 
I mean, this is not a team that has looked that impressive right. in, in recent months. Well, but when you look at the records, like you brought up briefly there, you do have to take into account sure, their region is insanely yeah. competitive by, you know, by, by is, competitive. Is there, is their region that much more, is their region any more competitive than, than EU is right now? I would say, I don't know. I what think, do you, what I do you guys think? think? I'm not, I'm not a panelist. What do you, what do you think, Skim, PL? You guys spend a lot of time watching European I think Europe is the most competitive region, for sure. I think so as well, because I feel like every team can beat every team yeah, on a daily basis in a best of three. I think the depth is insane. And, well, and I, yeah. I stand with Skim on this one. I think this is the difference, is Ehome lives in a region where there are three teams that feel right. significantly stronger. So you're going to have to suffer three losses per X games. Whereas in CIS right now, anybody can beat anybody at any given time. So there is no sort of, well, you got to go up against the big dogs, uh, which I think may skewer their numbers a little bit. But I'm with uh, you. I, I think mean, Ehome's in a good position. I honestly think Newbie will get an invite through the, or at least uh, be brought in on the back end of the qualifiers. I don't know how they're going to do it, but I think that Valve will bring Newbie back um, just for the sake of bringing back the previous champions. So uh, I, I think there is a, I think there's a good chance that that happens. I mean, again, people, people talk about roster changes, but again, at the end of the day, Three out of five players are still there mm -hmm. from last year's TF4 champions, and you have a player that finished fifth. I mean, they got a pedigree. They do a pedigree. It's not. It's it's not that unusual. Again, I, I think it would be. A, I would be a little bit embarrassed mm -hmm. if they got the direct invite. But I, anybody that rules it out at this point is crazy. All right. So uh, last thoughts on the Chinese scene. It sounds like we're all pretty firm that the top three are going. Um, we're most likely going to see E home there potentially if they can stand up and perform well. Um, anybody, anything else that we need to consider from the Chinese scene? Or it seems to me like that's the easiest one to talk about. Is there anybody to to you uh, to you other two guys? Um, proxy and skim. Any any teams that we haven't talked about from China? Because I feel like there are probably a couple that we've missed. I think I mean, there's. Yeah, you go ahead. I mean. Uh... I think that if you take out IG, LGD, and VG, mm -hmm. those teams are really close. But uh, I think, like, I mean, there is uh, a lot of teams that could take the fourth spot behind Ehome. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it's gonna be most likely between CDEC and HDT. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's right. I think there's a couple uh, potential. There's there's Tong Fu that has a sleeper ability to pop up and win games. But I think that we've sort of covered the big dogs who we're going to see competing. Um, that said, I think that that will be a fun qualifier to watch because all of the teams outside of the big three can upset each other at any given time. So that should be fun. Um, that said, let's roll over to Europe and get through this, the CIS slash... I don't want to say just CIS because this is all of Europe in this region grouping. Um, though most of the teams seem to come out of the CIS region. This is a big one. This is super heavy duty. A lot of them. I mean, this is this is stacked, right? This is also yep. a sliding bar. One day Navi is like, "What's happening to Navi? They're terrible." The next week they're kicking butt and taking names. Alliance has been coming back out of nowhere. Uh, how many invites do they get, and who do you think deserves directs? We'll start with Skim this time. We'll go backwards. Yeah, I mean, if we stick to the eight invites, I think Europe is just going to get three. Otherwise, I I could. Well, we could maybe make a case for them deserving maybe one more than China. I don't know. But um, I think it's going to be C9. I think that's pretty much a pretty obvious secret. And the third is Empire in my book. I think those are currently the three most, uh, the three strongest and most deserving teams out of Europe. Uh, Proxy, who are your three? I mean, I think that no one can argue with that three that Kim mentioned. Okay. Yep. Now, how's your three, Sam? Absolutely, so, I, I think I think by the way, the one thing I would club I, I would quibble with is that the way Skim put that made it sound like Empire was kind of number three out of yeah. the three, and I actually think you can make a case that Empire is a, is as deserving as the other two. So I think sure. that I think we can probably all agree C nine and Secret are sort of locks for the top two. And now, and, 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 and no no no, I, this is what I'm telling Empire's you, man. Lock. Gotcha. Empire is it, stow it away. So the conversation, the conversation happening around the internet right now is generally that Alliance, Ninjas in Pajamas, um, Aces uh, Polar, probably more so than even than Alliance, ha are in the race with Empire. Uh, Do you believe that? You, so you no. don't think that's true at all? Empire is far I, and away I, better. I, 
I, I, I, no, in terms of in terms of you compare resumes, mm. you can. I mean, Empire is the only team that's won two land events this year. Fair. And can Officially. and finish second out of the third, right? Right. I, I mean, th no. This is like, em if you actually sit down on paper and look at what these teams have done, uh, Empire has the far superior resume. Now, a lot of people, a lot of people are thinking back to last year when Empire showed kind of a disturbingly similar mm. pattern that they looked like world beaters for the thir first three months of the year mm. and then just tailed off and never really got their mojo back. I, there's, you have seen something similar this year, but I think this team in beating EG on land a couple of weeks ago yeah. at Columbus, it's, it's over, baby. It's done. So they lock. You think they lock it in? I, I can see that. I think I, I had an interview with uh, Hanskin from Ninjas in Pajamas about a week ago, um, and it was interesting to see the tenor of his interview two weeks prior with another interview group where he was like, you know, we're shooting for that direct invite to last week when it was a we're going to have to sort of go through qualifiers. So it seems like the players have sorted to accept that feeling as well that Empire and before their last one, I think Asus Polar, which is now VP, is sort of in the mix with that. Which, which I think, by the way, which I think is, it, this is part of why I think it was good that we left EU to last. Mm -hmm. Because this is where I say that if you said, no, no, mm -hmm. like last year, it's not going to be 8, it's going to be 11. Mm -hmm. Like there were to TI4, automatic invites. I think you can make a darn good case that the next three would, would maybe all be European. I think, I think NIP... Virtus Pro and Alliance, all three have a reasonable case. Now, Alliance, for those of you who are not already aware, Alliance, for some unfathomable reason, decided to drop Nikwa from their roster. And pick Bulldog yeah. back up, correct? Which I, I'm still just... I don't think they, they officially picked up Bulldog. Okay, but well, Nikwa's, it, but no, Nikwa's they out. Are not, no, Bulldog gotcha. has not been officially added to the roster. It was announced on Twitter that Nikwa is gone. A lot of us are presuming that Bulldog will be added in his place. Nothing has been announced along that regard. But I, I actually really, I have really liked what Nikwa has done yeah. for them over the last few weeks. I mean, everybody's talking about Mads drafting for good reason. I think he's been excellent. But I've liked the way Nikwa has played. <laughs> what, Sorry. What? Ryan uh -oh. Editor said the Bulldogs on the patch notes and saw the NP buffs. So I was like, I'm coming back. <laughs> and that's it. You know, honestly, though, like there, there's something to be said about the fact that he plays one of the best NPs in the world, if not the best. And after the buffs, he looks at TI and says, wait a second, I've got a good feeling about this. Uh, that said, we talked about MY getting a direct invite from the SEA region. Uh, most of us agreed that that was going to happen. Nas brought up a good point. In the media polls, as well as I think a lot of the ELO rankings, Team Empire, Aces Polar, and Alliance, uh, I'm sorry, Ninja Pajamas, Alliance, and Aces Polar all come in above Team Malaysia in terms of oh yeah, uh, quality of play. Do you think that that's fair, that they're going to have to fight for those spots versus Malaysia who gets a direct invite? Gentlemen, uh, Proxy, Skim, what do you think? I mean, oh, my direct yeah, invite is Rave. They finished fifth at the AC. Fair. Those teams didn't even qualify to the AC. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> so, but so, so, do you think Ninjas NIP? I'm gonna call them NIP for simpl simplicity. NIP Alliance and VP are better than Raven Malaysia. Proxy? Uh, not necessarily. Fair. Skim. What do you think? This is why we need land qualifiers to bring three yeah, re teams from all regions together to solve this issue. This is why like also like power rankings on a global range are really difficult to actually reflect how good the teams actually are, especially with a team like Team Malaysia, who up until three days ago hasn't even played a Western team before. Nice. So I don't think it's fair or safe to say that they are better than any of these teams, considering they've never played against them. But sure. you know, I think it's semantics, really. It's just all right. So let's go to let's go to qualifiers. Can anybody in the CIS region? We've named the top three. We've named that are sort of considered the top three: BP Alliance, Ninjas, and Pajamas. Who else is in the qualifier mix to potentially win a spot into TI? Can I can I indulge my curiosity? Sure. For a moment, guys. Uh, if you were to pick one of those three, mm. if you if Valve were oh. to tell you, okay, we're going to invite a ninth team. Uh. Who's your ninth team? Oh, man, you do this. Oh, my God. Nip. 
I love Nip with all my heart. I love all these players. They're know, awesome. Right? Uh, but they're amazing. It's guys. for me. It's VP. Like See, the way Aces Polar or VP Polar has played is amazing. Honestly, I can't argue I, with that. I can't argue I, with I, that. I think you can. I I think you can actually make the case for either because um, VP uh, X Polar VP now uh, have not performed as consistently in the last um, in the last month or two. True. As they had in the early part of the patch, they've fallen off uh, a lot. Like Empire has fallen off, and and NIP. It, 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 I mean, if you watch their games, they look like they look like a team that is right on the cusp of yeah. being tier one. Yeah, I you know, I I love Ninja Pajamas. I mean, they've been a guest on the show. They're great guys. They're hustlers. These kids hustle to be great. Uh, Alliance is a storyline team, right? Like they're a team that you want to see in TI just because you want to sort of. We followed their career. Like we've been well, following Alliance be, for so long. Well, let's be clear, though. I, I think in terms of in terms of how the resumes look on paper, right? I think Alliance is a, is I think they're in the conversation mm -hmm. largely because of what they've done in the past, and they have had some good results recently. Right. I mean, they've they've beaten NIP. And they've honestly, beaten VP recently. And if they bring back Bulldog, there's I think there's a very good chance. Like as far as even though Nick Nick Nikwa was doing a great job, I think Bulldog could potentially help them win a, a qualifier spot Oof. very comfortably. I think so. I think uh, especially with the changes to the patch, which we'll talk about later, there's a lot of Bulldog heroes that are going to be really true. relevant in the new meta. But it, I mean, that's to me though the the problem as as much as I mean Bulldog's one of my favorite players. He's an amazing guy to watch, but he has been. He has been an elite level player at precisely two tournaments. True. Since TI three. Fair. I got a soft spot in my heart for Alliance. I'm trying to. I'm trying to, I'm trying to let it. Come I do out. too. I, I, I actually. <laughs> I love that. I actually really like all three of those teams. I, like NIP. I think they belong. Honestly, well, I think just if you you talk about the eye test. Right. You watch them play Dota. I think they belong. In let terms of in terms of they could compete with the eight teams that we've talked about being direct invites. I just I think the problem is that once you go past eight, the waters get really, really muddy. Right. Let me ask you this, guys: uh, Navi Hellraisers. So the other two that sort of in the conversation. Can either of them beat those other three teams to get in through oh, qualifiers? Sure. Can Navi? they beat them? Yeah. Will they? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think Navi gets through the qualifiers. You do? Wow. Yes. Have you even e e even if e e e wait wait whoa whoa whoa. If if you're saying you're saying that NIP, Alliance, Hellraisers, and VP all four are in the qualifiers with Navi, and there are only two spots. Let's assume three spots. You, three. You think it'll be three. Okay. So three spot. Okay, three That's spots for Europe. Yeah. All right. Okay. It's not. It's not horribly unlikely. All right. All right. I can see. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. And even if there's two spots, I think Navi still makes it because wow. I'm not sure. If, I'm, I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with CS:GO, but there's something called Nip Magic. Um, <laughs> like yeah. NI, NIP in CS:GO just pulls off the craziest shit. Hmm. And I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Look, I'm gonna say Navi is just one of these teams. I can't even imagine TI without Navi. Let's be honest here. Like, can you imagine TI without Dendi, without Hobos? God, I, I, you know you're I, right. I, I hope he's there. I, I, I don't I just, want to. I, I, mean, I don't want to imagine TI without those guys. But I just that that EU qualifier is gonna be a mini TI it, this year, man. It's stacked, but right. that's I feel like that's one of these moments or that's one of these tournaments where people like Dendi and Hobos shine. And I don't know. I, I'm just I'd feeling love to it. See it. I'm just feeling. I would love I mean, to see it, of course, but so I mean, I if, if we just compare right now, right now, for sure, like VP Polar, Nip, Hellraiser, Alliance are above them. But, well, I think that there's there's a big validity to three spots coming out of Europe, especially with the fact that we just talked about how difficult SEA is past those first two spots, right? So there could very well be three. Which three? You guys, not Navi. I'm. I wish I could believe the way that you believe, and I. And if they make it, I'll be the first person to walk up and say, "Guys, I doubted you. I'm sorry." Uh, pick your three to go from the European scene through qualifiers. Skim. It's gonna be VP, NIP, and Navi. Wow. Okay. What do you think, PL? Nip Alliance Navi. What? Okay. Wow, nice. I I can't. I I have to on paper. I have to go with with NIP VP and Alliance. I I just I, and and even even watching the games, wow. 
Navi has had some, they've had some exciting games, they've had some great results, but I, I haven't seen that sustained high level of play yet. Mm. I haven't seen the cutting down of mistakes yet. I haven't seen the consistent drafting yet. I, I'm a huge Navi fan, but I, I haven't seen it in their play yet that they can, that they could take down any of those three teams in a best of three series. Wow. Gotta believe, man. Gotta you know, believe. here's the here's the deal. I here's wanna. The deal. I think that a a somebody pointed this out in chat. Uh, we haven't been giving Hellraisers enough credit. These guys have been performing well. They traditionally step up and play when they it's have, time to play. They have fallen off. So they fallen it's, off. But it's, I think it's when they really get... actually painful. They have been absolutely crushed by visa issues. Mm. Like I feel yeah, that's true. horrible for that team. They have they've had so many tournaments now that they had the chance to compete in that were denied uh, by. They should have been in Ohio as well, but. Yeah, I mean, the problem is I feel like the frustration over some of those visa issues might be bleeding into some of their online play because they've looked very, very inconsistent in online yeah. play recently as well. I can see that. Have but you watched uh, Red Bull Battleground, Battlegrounds? I have, yes. not. I have not. Yes, uh, who on Red Bull Battlegrounds? CSI. CIS, sorry. Oh, okay. I, no, 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 I'm sorry. I didn't see the qualifiers. I watched a bit of it today. So is El Hellraiser doing good there? They won. They 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 crushed Navi, I believe. There you go. Yeah. So I think that I think that there's some good stuff, and I, I think that we can probably all agree to this. While we have different selections for who gets in through qualifiers, that the European qualifiers is probably going to be some of the most fun, most intense Dota to watch. And I hope that it is land-based, because this is not a tournament that I want to see affected because of DDoS attacks or things yeah. like that that get in the way. These I, are teams that deserve to play. I agree. I think, I think you have to go at this point, unfortunately, because qualifiers right now, it's looking like qualifiers are maybe two or three weeks out. Mm. And so I think with that said, you probably, the best we're going to do at this point is regional lands. Yeah. If there are lands, you're not going to get teams from all over the world being able to get visas to all travel at the same place at this point. And I don't want to see a bunch of teams excluded because of visa issues. Right. But I do absolutely hope that you see um, that you see a European land. I really do. It should be it should be very very good. So it sounds like we pretty much run through the regions. We have an idea of who's going to be competitive. Uh, if you weren't listed, you know, it's not to say there aren't some teams that could come out uh, from the shadows and really dominate. I think that the most likely team that we didn't talk extensively about that could potentially surprise everybody is uh, North American Rejects version two. I think they have a lot of potential. Should they be able to pull their thing together? I heard they signed Greg as their manager tonight, so I don't. I was I don't, just I, about I, to say, like, I doubt the, that's going to help what? them in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, so yeah, Greg they officially have a shit works manager now, so it's like you know. I will say their win rate will probably fall, but their selfie rate will rise dramatically. <laughs> so, uh, no, all in seriousness, I think that they're a sleeper that could potentially come out and shock everybody. I think oh, there's God. a couple of other teams that could make huge showings in this upcoming tournament. Um, do you guys have any sort of thoughts as we sort of sign this out about TI invites that you think would really deserve a little bit of discussion? I mean, Vega Squadron is going to surprise mm. a lot of people because they have Sol and Mag right now. Yeah, they're pretty good. Okay, so that's your is, is that's your sleeper pick? Is it, did, Nahaz, Skim, do you guys have sleeper picks for these tournaments? Uh, I just wanted to s just send a little anecdote to Vega Squadron. There's this tournament that is only online and that has been very successful lately. And initially, they didn't even want to have Vega Squadron in their mm -hmm. tournament. But, you know, Vega Squadron kind of lucked their way into that tournament, and I believe they're in the playoffs right now. But, yeah, I think Vega's one of the better teams, or one of the sleeper teams, and probably, I want to say Root. I think Root is one of these sleeper teams, because, yeah, they're good right now, but I don't think too many people have them on their radar. Yeah, what do you think? I think that many people don't know that Fluff and TC is playing on one team. Uh, do you have that. any sleeper picks? No, I, actually, I think I think my, uh, my co-panelists here have, have brought out some very very good points I, I think I think those teams are, are teams to watch I actually really I really do think that NRV2 mm -hmm. uh, could be a very very good team but there just is not there's not enough on record right now for me to uh, to talk too much about them 
Excellent. Apparently, we're going to get a GIF out of uh, your reaction on the Greg is managing North American Rejects. So if you guys are listening on the podcast, you can uh, go jump to it. It'll be at about the one hour and 13 minute mark if you want to see Nahaz's oh, no. face when he finds out. Oh, no. It's pretty money. Uh, that said, guys, <laughs> we, we've gone long, but I think that we've done a good job of sort of talking about the regions and what to expect. I've literally, for those of you who are sort of uh, listening on the back end, I have had Twitter up with the notifications panel going just in case TI invites were announced at any point tonight. So this is something that we discussed, but it could happen as early as tomorrow. Uh, so kind of watch. And once we know what the invites look like, obviously we'll come back to you and see which of our panelists were right, which of our panelists were completely wrong. And uh, I look forward to covering each of these tournaments. We will be covering it for you. I'll give you the updates. Um, I believe that Dota FM will be covering it as wall to wall as possible for audio only. That means that if you are at work, you can listen to an audio cast of the event. Uh, so you don't have to miss anything. This is going to be the biggest thing in, uh, of the year, and I'm super psyched about it. Uh, guys, what are you most excited for? I'll leave you with this question. Uh, what are you most excited for for TI? Skim, what, what, what are you just like, God, I can't wait for this. Can't wait for the group stage again. I thought that the group stage with like this multi, multi-cast, whatever, was amazing. I mean, maybe that's because I wasn't there in person, but I think just the sheer amount of games you can consume on a daily basis. It's going to be amazing. Panel is going to be amazing, hopefully with a very, very dear panelists of ours. <laughs> and um, yeah, pretty much just casting and just everything all around it. Like the whole package, not even necessarily just the games, but, you know, it's just this, this feeling, this World Cup feeling, this oh my god yeah. feeling. Yeah. Uh, PL, what are you looking forward to the most? I'm actually looking to the qualifiers, European qualifiers. Oh, you're so that, good. That's, that's gonna be the, the pre-main event, so really. Good. So good. Uh, Nahas? Be in there. Period. And I, 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 I will... I will find a way to be there. I don't know what I'm going to be doing. I don't know whether I'm going to be just some guy, which I'm fine with being. That's what I did last year, and it was a freaking blast. Uh, I, I love meeting people in this scene. Uh, TI last year was, was a hell of a fun time. I am just looking forward to being in Seattle again. Absolutely. I'm excited. It's my first TI. I will be there, guys. Uh, I don't know what capacity I'll be there in. I know that I might just be just a guy. Uh, me and Nahaz might just be two old guys who room oh, together yeah. and have fun going to the event. Uh, either way, it's going to be a blast. And I'll tell you what I look most forward to. For those of you who may be new to the game after the last TI, I know a lot of folks joined up after uh, the $11 million prize pool. This is an amazing event for one singular reason, in my opinion. And it is that every aspect of competitive Dota, the entire Dota world, comes together. Studios, to a certain extent, cease to exist. Uh, casters yep. work with each other who've never work, who don't work together the rest of the year. Panelists from different groups and studios sit on the same panel. Interviewers Beautiful. from across the country, across the world, come out for this. And it's something where we stop being JD, we stop being BTS, we stop being HGTV, and we start being Dota 2 fans. And yep. I think that that is what makes this event so freaking amazing that's, so that's beautifully said for 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 at least a few days we all mm -hmm. just get to sit back and be fans of the game and let's be honest it's one hell of a game so that said guys that's that's uh that's where i want to leave it uh as far as the show goes um I want to thank the panelists for being here i want to thank you guys for listening if you're on the podcast or if you're watching live or on youtube um last round if you have a shout out or uh, or somebody you want to thank go ahead and do it nahaz your chance first. Thanks for having me on again, man. It's always a pleasure. PL? Yeah, shout out to all the Joint Dota editorial crew, mm. uh, especially Mali Tricks. Or, I mean, uh, those guys are just amazing. And shout out to you for inviting me to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for writing for the show. It's been uh, wonderful having you on board. Skim? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, and shout out to already the worst manager in the Dota 2 scene. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Greg. The reaction was not. I wasn't. I've got Greg on Skype now, like right. telling me off. No, I think all of us love Greg. It's 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 with love that we like <laughs> to insult him. He's a flamer, and it's fun to flame back. Uh, that said, guys, I do appreciate a special shout out here, not only to our sponsors, uh, Razor, Betway, and MM1.fm, but also to Proxy and Skim because it's 4:30 in the morning when we started the show for them, and it is now 5:45 in the morning. So they uh, woke up early. They showed up. And uh, I think did a great job for <laughs> how ridiculously early it is. I think the sun's actually rising uh, in Proxy's se section of the world. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for listening. Have a wonderful evening. And as always, Toffee's out.